Hey G fans, GojiFan93 here, and welcome to the long-awaited Godzilla retrospective series. In this series, we will be covering every single Godzilla game from 1983 to 2016. So, sit back and relax, we got a lot of games to get through. Oh hey Goji fan, I heard you were doing a series on all the Godzilla video games? Super Godzilla Gaming? What, what are you doing here and how did you get into my video? Uh, I don't know actually, but I was hanging around and heard you were making a retrospective of all the Godzilla games. Do you need any help? Not really, I, I pretty much played all the Godzilla games, I think I got it. You sure? I mean my name is Super Godzilla Gaming? You do realize there are over like 40 Godzilla games, right? Wait, over 40 games? Oh, yeah, you know what? I might need your help with this. Do you want to come along? Oh, yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, well, here we go. Let's start from the very beginning. All right, let's begin with the very first Godzilla game ever made, simply called Godzilla, on the Commodore 64, released in 1983, developed by Glenn Fisher of Codeworks. Funny enough, the first Godzilla game was actually a strategy game, and not a game where you go around destroying a city. In this game, you, the player, control the military, and it is your job to stop Godzilla. The level is a map of Japan, and Godzilla can appear at random areas. There is information on the screen telling you basic supplies you have, whether it be your troops, or the population of the city, planes, etc, etc. You have eight attack options, land attack, sea attack, air attack, move troops, move ships, missile, atom bomb, which is the most powerful attack, and quit. Depending on what move you make, the game will create a dialogue to let you know the outcome of your decision. This will tell you how many troops or planes you have left if you won. Here's a little bit of fun trivia for this game. While it is the first video game to feature Godzilla centrally, it was never officially licensed by Toho. This one and the next game to feature Godzilla, which is called Godzilla and the Martians, are both unlicensed video games, so they're technically not the first real games to feature Godzilla, but the next video game on the docket is the first official Godzilla game. So that's the first game on our list, but we have plenty more to go. Next on our journey is technically the first licensed Godzilla video game. Godzilla vs. Three Major Monsters is a game made by Bandai on the MSX, released in 1984. The game features five monsters from the Godzilla franchise, Godzilla, Megalon, Kamonga, King Ghidorah, and Manila. Now because the MSX was very limited with what you can do with the game, Godzilla only has one attack, which is his atomic breath. The basics of the game is to take out the enemy monsters without having them touch you, getting hit by their enemy attacks, or falling into holes that Megalon creates in the ground. Interestingly enough, there is a two-player option, but it's kind of like the old NES Super Mario style of co-op. The next game is a weird one, and one game that you might all know. Gorgira Kun is a game made on the MSX, released in 1985. Now funny enough, this game was ported to the Game Boy, but we will get to that later. Gojira Kun's gameplay is very odd for a Godzilla game. You play as a chibi version of Godzilla, and you must avoid the enemies by climbing vines and punching rocks from your mouth. Yes, you form a giant fist and punch rocks out of your mouth. Definitely one of the weirder games, but like I said, more of this game will come later. The next game in our retrospective does not have a lot of info on it. I mean, heck, even on Wikizilla, it doesn't have much info. From what Wikizilla can tell us, it's a game developed for the FM7 and X1 PC, released in 1985. The player is Godzilla, and in this game, it does appear you walk around destroying things and fighting the military. That's pretty much it, there's not too much info on this obscurity. Now that would be it for the old games, but there is one more to mention. A game called Monster Fair, made for the MSX in 1986, is more of a Mothra game, but Godzilla has a cameo in it. Still, it's not an official Godzilla game. Alright, let's begin with the game that everyone knows about, Godzilla Monster of Monsters, released in 1988 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. In this game, you control Godzilla and Mothra as they go through many stages fighting not only Godzilla monsters, but some other Toho Universe monsters as well. The game features a plethora of Toho kaiju goodness, including Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, Gigan, Hedera, Baragon, Varan, Mogira, and Gazora. 
The objective of the game is to advance the board by selecting side-scroller type levels and crush your way to victory. You will then eventually run into enemy monsters and will have one-on-one -on -one fight. Once you get past them, you must get Godzilla and Mothra to the end of the map to advance to the next board. While it sounds simple in concept, the game can be very hard and frustrating at times due to the bullet hell nature of the combat system. But thanks to the many health power-ups that appear out of rocks or killing enemies, it can still be very enjoyable. Even if Mothra is continually knocked to the bottom left of the screen, try that against Gazora. Oh, it's the worst. Not a bad way to introduce Godzilla onto home consoles, but then they had to go and mess that up in the next game. Oh no, not this game. What's up, Goji fan? It can't be that bad, can it? Oh, yes it is. Let's just get on with it. Godzilla 2 War of the Monsters was developed for NES in 1991, but was never released in Japan. Oh gee, I wonder why. Here we have another strategy game where you don't play as Godzilla, but as the military trying to stop him. Kind of like the first Godzilla game on Commodore 64. As you might expect, the game was not very well received by fans because, while well, the gameplay was kind of confusing, even the booklet didn't really alleviate this problem. It's almost like a game of chess. You have to move military forces to fight monsters, have them retreat so they aren't destroyed, and just keep doing that pattern for whatever monsters you encounter. It's a bit of a slog, even Wikizilla doesn't have an explanation on how the gameplay mechanics work. Let's move on. Okay, before we continue, there is another game that Godzilla had a cameo in, but unfortunately we could not find any footage of it. But in the game Circus Caper, Godzilla shows up somehow and helps the player do something. Yeah. Okay, next on our list is the infamous Super Nintendo classic, Super Godzilla, released in 1993. Super Godzilla Gaming, you want to take it from here? Oh gladly, this game is my jam! So, Super Godzilla is not a traditional type of Godzilla game of destroying cities. Instead, it's kind of like the opposite. You guide Godzilla through the city to get to your objectives. The story in a nutshell is something like out of an old school movie. Aliens are invading the Earth, and it's up to you as the military to guide Godzilla to the enemy so he can save the world. The game is sort of split into two screens. The top screen shows Godzilla walking through the city, destroying whatever is in his path. The bottom screen is the guide, where you, the player, move the little blue ball, which is Godzilla, and your ultimate goal is to move towards the pink ball, which is the enemy monster. Along the way, you can stomp on enemy tanks that keep shooting at you from a distance, and you can get energy by running into the power plants that humans have set up for you. Now that's the first game mechanic. The second part of the game is the combat system. It's not really a fighter, but it's kind of like a game of cat and mouse to see who lands a first hit. What you have to do is walk up to a boss, hit them, walk backwards, and then select the attack you want to use on the bottom part of the screen. It's a little bit awkward at first, but it can get pretty intense in the later stages. Thankfully, the first boss, King Ghidorah, doesn't have many little gimmicks to worry about, but as the story progresses, bosses become increasingly more difficult. Some of them may be immune to your atomic breath, or may be immune to your body slams, so you have to pay very close attention. And depending on your fighting spirit, you will get either weak attacks or really strong attacks. But perhaps the most well-known aspect of this game is how it introduced two new monsters. Super Godzilla, the titular monster of the game, and the final boss, Baggin, a monster that was scrapped from many Godzilla and Toho films. Nicely said. Time to move on to the next game. The next game is the first official great fighting Godzilla game. Godzilla Battle Legends, made for the Turbo Duo in 1993, developed by Alpha Systems and published by Hudson Soft in the States. This game is definitely one of the best 2D fighting Godzilla games out there. The game has a plethora of monsters to play as well as having great visuals and music. What's really cool about this game is that it features many different incarnations of Godzilla throughout his movie history. The game is structured more like a traditional fighting game than anything we have talked about so far, which is a real treat. Unfortunately, there's not much else to really say about it, but it's still a solid Godzilla game and worth checking out. Now we have the sequel to Battle Legends, released in 1994 on the Super Famicom. 
There was supposed to be an American version called Godzilla Destroy All Monsters, not to be confused with the game on GameCube. It was cancelled for American audiences. The game does not really feel like a sequel as more of a step backwards from what Battle Legends had. It has fewer characters and it's way harder than Battle Legends. Still, the game has very tight controls and plenty of moves for the monsters to use. It is very fun to play against friends, but be warned that the AI is unforgiving in this sequel. Well, that's all for the 8 to 16 bit games, but before we go, we have another game Godzilla was in. In the game Battle Soccer for the Super Famicom, Godzilla has a cameo. The game is mainly a tokusatsu crossover with Ultraman, Kamen Rider, Gundam, and Godzilla. To start, do you guys remember that Gorjiro Kun game in our first episode? Well, this is the sequel slash port of that game onto the original Game Boy in 1990. The game still has the same goal of dodging enemies and dropping boulders onto them. What's funny is the plot of the game. In the Japanese version, the monsters captured Godzilla's girlfriend, named Vegeta, and Godzilla has to rescue her all Super Mario Bros. style. Well, without the platforming element and more punching rocks. And by punching, I mean a fist coming out of Godzilla's mouth. Yes, that's still a thing. But in the American version, it's roughly the same plot, just replace Godzilla's girlfriend, Vegeta, with Minya. Okay, next is what I like to call the handheld equivalent to Godzilla on NES. I say that because it has the same side-scrolling style as Godzilla NES, but the game does move a lot slower, and it's not as fun. The game was released in 1993, developed by Bandai, and was only released in Japan. The game does have many monsters from Godzilla's history, like Batro, Mothra, Hedera, Megalon, and even some less popular monsters like Gabra and Gorosaurus. Not too bad for a monster roster. Next we have Godzilla Giant Monster March, released in 1995 for the Sega Game Gear. This game has an interesting gameplay style. Once again, it's not necessarily running around destroying buildings as it has the strategy gameplay style to it. Seriously, what's with Godzilla games in the strategy genre? When the game begins, the player has two choices to pick from. You can either play as Godzilla himself or the military. If you choose Godzilla, you must destroy buildings and other kaiju on each level. If you choose the military, your job is to obviously fight off Godzilla and other kaiju. The fighting mechanic comes into play when both monster and military are in the same spot, then the game turns into a battle mode similar to a 2D fighter. Now we move to... Uh, the Godzilla 1998 movie tie-in games. Well, actually to be more specific, the animated series. There were two games on the Game Boy Color, Godzilla the Series and Godzilla the Series Monster Wars. Do you want to say anything, Super G? <laughs> uh, it's alright, Goji, you can, you can do this one. Ah, damn. Okay, well, the game is a 2D side-scroller where you play as Zilla Jr., fighting off the military. In the game, you don't really control Zilla's movement. You mostly just aim the cursor to blow up the military. Long story short, it's not that fun. Next, please. Okay, let's move on to our last two games for the episode, and these are some good ones. Next, we have Godzilla Domination for the Game Boy Advance, released in 2002 as a handheld counterpart to Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee on GameCube and Xbox. This game has fantastic visuals, music, and controls. It plays similar to King of the Monsters, so it's definitely one of the best fighting Godzilla games out there. Heck, it might even be the best Godzilla handheld game to date! Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, actually I did, because <laughs> I wrote the script. Last, we have Godzilla Unleashed Double Smash, released in 2007 as the handheld counterpart to Godzilla Unleashed on the Wii and PS2. Now, some people might not like this game, and we can see why, but I do enjoy this game in small bursts. Yeah, despite the very blocky visuals, the game does have a certain charm to it. With the stylized look and very funky music, this game is a hidden gem. The gameplay can be fun and addicting, and the boss fights are really awesome. This is another 2D game similar to Godzilla NES, where you can choose between two monsters to play through the campaign. Actually, this game is very similar to Godzilla on NES, as you can select Godzilla as your ground monster and Mothra as your flying monster. But there are other monsters to choose from as well. First we have Godzilla Archipelago Shock, released in 1995, developed by Sega for the Sega Saturn. Once again, we have a strategy Godzilla game. Man, what's with Godzilla and strategy games? Anyways, SGG, mind explaining how the game works? Oh, sure thing, Goji fan. It's pretty straightforward. You as the player control the military, so your goal is to direct your tank and military equipment on a 3D isometric playing field to attack Godzilla. 
When you attack Godzilla or take damage from him, your health points degrade until you or Godzilla is defeated. Think of it kind of like a spiritual sequel or remake of Godzilla 2 on the NES. Now technically this game isn't fully 3D because the characters are sprites in a 2D style, but it's the overall look and the isometric design which gives the game more depth. This game is definitely one of the more interesting Godzilla games. Alright, now this is the first main step into 3D for Godzilla. Godzilla Generations is a Dreamcast game released in 1998. The game is super simple and very fun. Finally, the first Godzilla game to actually have Godzilla do what he's known for. Destroying stuff. The goal of this game is to destroy as much of the map as possible in the amount of time you have given. The controls feel a bit dated and tank-like, but hey, it makes you feel like a giant monster. You also have special moves you can do, like shoot Godzilla's atomic breath, and then charge it up for his red beam for more damage. What's really cool about this game is there are other monsters to play as, like Mechagodzilla 74, Minya, Godzilla 1954, Zilla, and even a giant Dr. Serizawa where his weapon is a giant oxygen destroyer. Yeah, that's awesome. Released a year after Godzilla Generations, we have the sequel named Godzilla Generations Maximum Impact on the Dreamcast. This game isn't really a direct sequel, as the game has different mechanics, basically making it a different game. The game plays more like a rail shooter, which is a first for Godzilla games. Godzilla walks in a predetermined path of destruction as you aim Godzilla's breath to attack military as well as other enemy monsters. The game's overall presentation is amazing, and the music is definitely one of the best video game soundtracks. Also, if you're a huge Heisei era fan, this game is for you. The game basically plays out each level from the Heisei era. You fight Baalante first, with Destroya being the final boss. One thing that's strange though is Batra is nowhere to be seen in this game, which is a shame. One last thing to mention is the game's character designs are based off of concept art from the Heisei movies as well. The last game for today is Godzilla Trading Battle, released on the PlayStation 1 in 1998 by Toho. The game was only released in Japan. Well this is a tricky one because since the game was only released in Japan and when I tried to play it I had no clue what to do. Heck, even Wikizilla has nothing to show for the gameplay. Even looking at Toho Kingdom for any specifics that the game has, all they have are, and I quote, using cards featuring monsters from all reaches of Godzilla and Toho lore. The player must help defend the Earth from a hostile alien invasion. After defeating the story mode, the player can access duels and earn even more and rarer cards. Don't worry Goji fan, you aren't alone. I tried this game and was left pretty confused too. But thankfully, there are some helpful guides floating around to help you figure out what's going on in this game. It's surprisingly complex. It plays like a card game where you select powers from various monsters and battle out that way. Except, if you use your powers, it hurts you for some reason. It's kind of weird. Ah, well, thanks for that info. See, it's a good thing you're here. Yeah, I knew you would need my help, Goji fan. Let's start with Godzilla and Arcade. This game was developed by Ben Presto, released to Japan Arcades in 1993. This game is your traditional 2D fighting game. I believe that this game didn't do too well because released in the same year was Godzilla Battle Legends, which was a lot faster paced, but that's just my thought. Next we have Godzilla Heart Pounding Monster Island, released in 1995 for the Sega Pico. Citing from Wikizilla's page on this game, it states, the game consists of multiple pages which act as hub levels. Each page contains multiple kaiju, which can be clicked on and interacted with. This causes some kaiju to perform different animations, while with some kaiju it can activate minigames. The player is in control of Godzilla. Released along with Godzilla 1998, there was an online multiplayer game to tie in with the movie. There isn't much listed about this game, but supposedly it's an online multiplayer survival game that takes place after the events of the movie, where New York has been overrun by baby Godzillas. You as the player would assume the role as a soldier, and it's up to you to stop the baby Godzillas. Not a bad idea, actually. Too bad this game is dead. Oh well. Next we have Godzilla Movie Studio Tour, released in 1998 on PC. I have no experience with the game, but SGG, you've made a couple of gameplay videos, so what's this game about? Oh sure. Godzilla Movie Studio Tour is an interactive game developed by Premiere Systems in 1998. Basically, the game is a database on info from the Godzilla movies. Really, it's just a collection of Godzilla clips and concepts as you go through the tour. You can even print out items in the shop, which doesn't really work anymore, but it's the thought that counts. 
so it barely counts as a game, which is why it's in this episode. Next is one of the cooler games. Titled the CR Godzilla 3 ST Battle, this game is a pachinko game. What's a pachinko machine? It's a type of mechanical game originating in Japan and is used both as a form of recreational arcade game and much more frequently as a gambling device. This game was one of the first of many pachinko Godzilla games that we will get to next. This one in particular is notable to mention because it features new Godzilla tokusatsu film footage since 2004. The game was developed by Nugen and was released in 2006. Here we have another Pachinko Godzilla game. This one is titled Godzilla Patchy Slot Wars, I believe that's how you say it, released in 2007, developed by Sammy as a Patchy Slot unit. This game is similar to the other Pachinko machine games. One more Pachinko game we have for you is CR Godzilla Descent of the Destruction God, released in 2010, developed by Nugen. This was the sequel to the first CR Godzilla game from 2006. Next, we have Godzilla on Monster Island. No, not the movie, The Slot Machine. I have actually had experience playing this at Las Vegas, and it's confusing, but it's still cool to see a Godzilla slot machine in America. Not much else to say on this one. Now, I don't know if this even counts as anything, but thought I'd slip it into this episode. Godzilla Crisis Defense was a game released in 2014 as one of the many movie tie-in games. This game just had you clicking spots on a map and then it would show a clip from the 2014 movie. Nothing too special. The first game we are looking at is probably the least enjoyable game for mobile Godzilla games. Not much to say about this, but Godzilla Monster Mayhem is an iOS game made in 2009. The game consists of you playing as Godzilla fighting King Ghidorah. That's it. Nothing else is in this game. So yeah, not much to say about this one. Okay, now this is one of the more interesting Godzilla games. Godzilla Strike Zone is a mobile slash PC game that came out as a movie tie-in game for Godzilla 2014. The game first came out on iOS and Android, but then was made available as a browser game for computers. The gameplay is super interesting, as it's the first FPS Godzilla game. The game takes place as the Halo Jumpers drop down into the city, and it's up to you to survive Godzilla's reign of destruction. It's very short, but for what it is, it can be pretty awesome. It's too bad it wasn't made into a high-budget console game. Okay, next we have Godzilla Smash 3. Now, you guys know how I feel about this game, but we're not here to review each game, just to go over them. Godzilla Smash 3 is also another Godzilla 2014 tie-in game. The game is a puzzle game and plays like Candy Crush. You don't really control Godzilla. How you attack enemies is by connecting the most amount of the same colored items on the screen. The more items you can stack up, the more powerful attack you can dish out. At the very least, the game could be a fun time waster. One little mention of the next game is Godzilla X Monster Strike. Now this isn't an official Godzilla game, just another cameo. What Monster Strike is, it's an RPG game. It was released in 2014 for iOS and Android. The last game we'll be talking about today is Godzilla Kaiju Collection. Now this game I only played a bit, but I know you SGG played much of it, so I'll let you explain. Godzilla Kaiju Collection is a Japanese only mobile game for iOS and Android devices released in 2015. It contains a massive roster of monsters, the biggest to date and was consistently updated for over a year. Now while this was only released for Japan devices, you could still get it in the States by various means, but unfortunately the game ended its service on April 21st of 2016 and is no longer playable or downloadable for that matter. Still, as basic as the game was, it was fun, and it acted kind of like a strategy RPG game where you could play as either Godzilla monsters or military forces if you so chose. First, we have probably the best co-op Godzilla fan game ever. Godzilla Ultraman Gamera is a fan-made game that first came out in 2011, and since then has been making updates till this very day. The game is a fantastic beat-em-up style like Streets of Rage. The game features a variety of monsters to play as, and it's a huge joy. Now, one of the best things about this game is the co-op. You can enjoy this game with up to three friends throughout the whole adventure. It gets extremely hectic watching everybody on screen fighting various monsters and working together to reach the end of the stage. Next we have probably the most known Godzilla fan game, Godzilla Daikaiju Battle Royale. 
This game is a browser-based fighting game with a huge roster of characters, and I mean huge. Seriously, like every kaiju in Toho's universe is here, including different versions of the monsters. Godzilla Dead Kaiju Battle Royale has been around since 2012 and takes a huge influence from the NES game Godzilla Monster of Monsters. And like the previously mentioned game, it receives updates to this very day, introducing new monsters, new stages, and new music. The first game to show for today needs no introduction. Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee is a full 3D fighting game released in 2002 for the GameCube, developed by Pipeworks and published by Atari. The game was then later ported to 2003 for the original Xbox. This was the very first Godzilla game I ever played, and it is truly one of the best G games to exist. The game's story involves a new kind of alien enemy to the Godzilla mythos named the Vortac. They send a transmission to Earth, telling that they have control of Earth's monsters, and that we surrender to them or else they will destroy humanity with the monsters. It's up to you to stop the Vortac from taking over the planet by doing what monsters know best, fighting one another. The game has 11 monsters to play as, 12 for the Xbox version as Kiryu is an uh, exclusive character to the Xbox. You can unlock monsters by playing the single player campaign and beating Mechagodzilla 2 at the end. You can also unlock a large variety of stages to play on, as well as changing the stages to a day or night style. Other things to collect are gallery items that you can unlock during the campaign. The harder the difficulty, the better chances of getting a new gallery item will appear after destroying a specific building. The game's overall presentation is exceptional, the character designs are great looking, and the stages themselves are very large for a fighting game. On the Xbox version, the graphics are greatly improved with better texture quality. The music as well has a fierce tone to it, getting you pumped to fight. How can you top this kind of game? Well, the next game certainly can. Celebrating Godzilla's 50th anniversary was a big deal for Toho, with a movie, merchandise, and of course an amazing video game. Godzilla Save the Earth is the sequel for Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee, developed once again by Pipeworks and published by Atari for the original Xbox and PS2 in 2004. This is arguably the best Godzilla game to date, and for good reason. The story involves the return of the Vortac, only this time by their queen, Vorticia. They want to steal the G-cells using their ultimate weapon, Space Godzilla. Same thing as before, pick your monster and start beating up the enemy kaiju. During the game's campaign, you can pick up G-cells to earn extra points. At the end of the campaign, if you beat the game on a harder difficulty, you fight Space Godzilla, and after winning, you blast him into a black hole. Things are a bit different for unlocking in this game. A new addition is challenges. These mini-games make the player do specific types of games to earn points, like playing basketball, shooting UFOs from the sky, and even fighting Orga's three forms. Instead of just beating the campaign to unlock monsters for destroying buildings to get gallery items, you must earn enough points and buy them in the shop screen. Everything has doubled in this game. There are a total of 18 monsters to play as, as well as a huge amount of gallery items, including concept art from Godzilla Final Wars. The game also supported online play, making it the first Godzilla game with this ability. Unfortunately, since the original Xbox's servers were shut down, you can no longer play online. It is still possible to play online with the PS2 version, though. 
Last in the Atari trilogy, we have Godzilla Unleashed for the Wii and PS2, developed by Pipeworks and published by Atari. This would be the last Godzilla game developed by Pipeworks. Once again, the game tried to top itself by adding a lot more stuff. First off, let's talk about the story. The story of Godzilla Unleashed is a lot more complex than the previous games. The story takes place 20 years after the events of Godzilla Saved the Earth. It begins with a meteor shower falling to the Earth, causing major disasters around the world, such as climate shifts and earthquakes. Crystals start to appear all around the world, and at the same time the monsters begin to destroy cities due to the changes across the world. The Vortac return as well and use the crystals to their advantage to try and take over the Earth. Towards the end of the game, it is revealed Space Godzilla is behind the Crystal Calamity, as he was trying to escape the alternate dimension he was thrown into in the last game. As you can probably tell, the game's plot is way more complex than the previous two games. Along with the game's plot, there are once again many changes to the style. For one, the controls have shifted to a motion control for the Wii version. The PS2 version remains the same style from Save the Earth. You now have to swing the Wii mode and nunchuck to perform attacks and special moves. There is also a new mechanic of absorbing the crystals around the map, and once you absorb too much, you hit critical mass which basically makes your character faster and stronger. When it comes to the monster roster, there is now a total of 26 playable monsters for the Wii version, and only 20 for the PS2 version. There was originally supposed to be a PSP version of the game, but that was scrapped in favor of the PS2 version. Next we have the latest Godzilla game simply titled Godzilla, aka Godzilla vs. Developed by Natsumi Atari and published by Bandai Namco for the PS3 in 2014 and then later being ported to the PS4 in 2015. This game is not a fighting game and goes back to the style that Godzilla Generations did where you walk around methodically destroying everything in your path. The plot is similar to an average Godzilla flick of the military fighting off Godzilla's rampage. The game has a couple of modes, first being God of Destruction mode, which is the campaign, King of Kaiju mode, which pits you against six randomly selected monsters, and Diorama Mode, which allows you to make cool-looking screenshots of minifigures based on the monster models. In the game, the goal is to destroy generators. Once all the generators are destroyed in an area, the level is complete. You also grow as you absorb G energy. You start the game at 50 meters, but then can grow up to sometimes over 100 meters. The more you grow, the more powerful you become. The game also has a secret ending if you manage to grow to 100 meters in the campaign, depending on which kaiju you play as. If you're playing as Hazy Godzilla, you transform into Burning Godzilla and fight the 2014 version of Godzilla. Once you beat him, Burning Godzilla is frozen. Then Mechagodzilla or Kiryu, depending on who you fought previously, grabs you and slam dunks you into the ocean Godzilla x Mechagodzilla style. The game does have unlockables, and a good amount of it. You can unlock monsters by fighting them in the campaign, and you can also upgrade them in the evolution mode to make your character stronger. This comes in handy for the multiplayer mode. Yes, this game does have a multiplayer mode where you can fight other players online, but unfortunately it was implemented very late in development, and as a result it's very unbalanced due to the upgrade system. This is the latest Godzilla game to have been released. Now before we end it, there is one more cameo Godzilla managed to get himself into. In the game Ace Combat Infinity, there was a collaboration between Godzilla vs. and Ace Combat to have Godzilla appear in one of the levels you fight in. Well guys, that brings us to the end of our journey of Godzilla's history through video games. We hope you enjoyed it, we had a lot of fun making this, this was a very fun series to make, and uh, we just hope you guys enjoyed it and got a little bit of information about all the Godzilla games out there, and even some that you didn't even know, because there were a lot of games that I didn't even know existed. I want to give a big shout out to Super Godzilla Gaming. Thanks to him, I was able to compile a great list of all these Godzilla games. There were a bunch of games I didn't even know existed that he helped me out with, and also providing some footage for the uh, episodes. Hey, don't even worry about it, Goji fan. It was my pleasure. Take it easy. And also, big shout out goes to Toho Kingdom and also Wikizilla. Um, those two sites we used a lot. We cited their sites uh, while writing the script and they helped out a lot with information on those sites about some of the games that we didn't really know that neither me or Super Godzilla Gaming knew about. So big shout out to Wikizilla and Toho Kingdom. Thank you guys so much. Now one more question that I want to say is, what is next for Godzilla in video games? Well, so far there isn't really anything that's new. There isn't a new official game that was announced, but there is one thing that is coming out soon called Project City Shrouded in Shadow. 
And that game supposedly is a survival kaiju game that has Ultraman and Godzilla monsters in it. So it's kind of a Godzilla cameo, but that's pretty much the only thing we're getting that's uh, future related to Godzilla games. So that's what we can look forward to in the future. And once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay big, G-Fans.